Okay, that's better. So this is oleander, um, often used as hedging plants. See them everywhere in the Mediterranean. And you can see from the picture, from the photograph, now it's in focus, that you've got um, these sorts of very thin leaves cutting down surface area. And if we looked at the leaf in detail, we can see that it's got a few features. So first of all, it's got a much thicker waxy cuticle than normal. That helps to reduce the cuticular transpiration. It's got three layers of epi epidermis, whereas you'd only normally expect one. Um, and that's going to increase the distance over which uh, diffusion has to happen to lose water. Then we've got a layer of photosynthetic tissue, these long narrow cells, these palisade cells, and then underneath the spongy mesophyll, and another layer of palisade cells there. So you can see these uh, quite stiff leaves and held quite upright. Um, I'll just point out at this point that um, oleander, really, really toxic. Don't eat it. Don't even be tempted. That doesn't look very tasty anyway, does it? So if we follow the lower epidermis round, so again, you know, lower epidermis, really quite thick, which is where we expect to find the stomata. If we follow it round, you can see that the guard cells, I'll just colour them in green so that they stick out a bit. So the guard cells are sunken. So they're actually sort of, you know, almost in the middle of this sort of spongy uh, mesophyll layer and not sort of directly down here where we would expect to see them. You can also see that we have these uh, trichomes, these hair-like extensions of the lower epidermal cells and all of this functions, so if you can imagine your water molecules still building up in here, they're going to end up being trapped right next to the stomata. So you'll have a much less diffusion gradient and therefore you're going to lose far less water. So that's um, Nerium, the oleander from Spain. Um, another one that's featured on past exam papers is the Hakia plant. This is an Australian plant. Again, you can see beautiful blue sky, so this is obviously hot and dry. Um, and this is just comparing it with a normal leaf. And you can see that these strap-like leaves, there's not really an underside and a top side as such. But you can see here, really thick waxy cuticle, hugely thick. And this little chamber just above the stomata. So again, we're looking at sunken stomata here with the epidermis above it and the waxy cuticle and this little chamber here so the water vapour is going to leave. It's then going to kind of accumulate in this space here and it can only really get out through that little narrow gap. So that's the Hakia plant. So moving to um, something perhaps more familiar to you, so if any of you have been to the seaside and been to some sand dunes, you know, there's a very sort of sharp cutty grass called marum grass and this is a very beautiful drawing from, mm, out of a really ancient book, this is, my, this is my ancient book, look, ancient, beautifully drawn, somebody from Manchester University actually, Maud Jepson. Biological drawings with notes and an absolute Bible. What a genius this lady is. Anyway, so drawing down a microscope, she's drawn a marum grass leaf down a microscope. I don't want you to worry too much about abaxial and adaxial leaf surfaces. For goodness sake, who's got time to look at that? But notice that this leaf is rolled round. And inside the, so inside the roll, this is where the water vapour is going to build up. And then we've got these little, you know, we've got those little hairs to trap water vapour. If we look at where the stomata are, so the stomata are kind of here, down near the base, down here. 
might have a stomata there, a stomata there. And so the water is going to be leaving water vapour again, leaving, but getting sort of trapped in these grooves, trapped in the roll, and further trapped by those trichomes. So it's really going to reduce the um, diffusion gradient. They also have a feature, so she's marked them as thin wall cells which cause the leaflets to open when turgid and roll up where, where flaccid. These little cells here are the hinge cells, so that when they go flaccid and collapse they're actually going to curl that leaf round. So marron grass absolutely ideally adapted, it's got just about everything. You know, stomata in the grooves, it's got hairs, it's got rolled leaves, and of course it's got less uh, surface exposed to the outside, to the wind and the sun, if there is any in, uh, in Britain, ever, uh, so that then there's no stomata on that side at all. Uh, it's got a really thick waxy cuticle. And the other problem, of course, that all of these uh, lovely dry and uh, arid uh, plants have is that their, te their cells will tend to go a little bit flaccid. And so they often have lots and lots of strengthening tissue um, just to ensure that they can stay upright and get as much sunlight as possible. So we're on to our last sort of couple of plants. Uh, this one again, I'm thinking, you know, is going to be fairly familiar to you. It's a pretty common uh, British plant in gardens and on moorland. This is... Um, a photograph taken down a microscope of, Her of Erica, which is Heather. And again, you can see, look at this beautiful, uh, thick, waxy cuticle around the outside. Really, really thick. You know, that's got measurable thickness. Then you've got sort of the epidermal cells, and then you've got the palisade cells, and you can see this leaf is kind of fairly rolled. You've got the spongy mesophyll cells, and it's only here that you're going to get stomata. And again, lots of little hairs around the stomata. So again, the water vapour is going to maybe leave the stomata, get trapped in place by these hairs, and in this very sort of tiny roll, there's going to be a lot of water vapour building up and therefore reducing the diffusion gradient to the outside. So they're not my favourite xerophytes, this is my favourite xerophyte. Oh, look at these, they're gorgeous. They're called stone plants. Um, lithops, from the Greek, litho, meaning stone. And they are only two leaves, and if you sort of did a, 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 a cross-section, I suppose, they're kind of that shape. They've got then a groove down the middle. They're actually, you find these in really, really, really hot deserts with very, very bright light. And they've got this kind of, uh, this, this patterning underneath here is little crystals in a really chunky cuticle. So um, that cuticle is packed out with crystals that kind of protect them from very high light intensities. They're fairly succulent underneath, so that means that they've, you know, they've got a bit of water in there. And their stomata are down, down here so that all of that water vapour can kind of build up in this little groove here where this flower's coming out. So the stomata is sort of right down in the, in the groove. That's why I really love them. Um, and it, you can see that how tiny they are. This is a very small plant pot with a lot of different sorts of uh, stone plants in and they just do look like tiny little pebbles. Absolutely fantastic. And of course their surface area to volume ratio is is tiny so they've got hardly any surface area in relation to their volume absolutely brilliantly adapted uh, xerophyte plant there and and pretty flowers as well that emerge sort of from the groove which is great 